Yo, what's up guys? Back again with another MLB The Show Diamond Dynasty Guide video. Today we're going to go into like a sort of a comprehensive uh, beginner's guide to MLB The Show Diamond Dynasty. How to get a really, really good team, no money spent. How to get into this game mode. Some of you only play mode of the show, some of you only play franchise. I get a lot of questions in my live streams about, you know, Big Dev, how can I get the best team? How can I get these good cards unlocked quickly? You know, wh how does content work in this game, you know? So, I'm going to... Break it down for you right now as best as I can. Show you guys the best way to get a good team, no money spent, and how content is working this year and how they've been kind of pushing it out to us. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, so if you don't already know, Diamond Dynasty this year is very different than any other year that we've ever seen. Um, some people love it, some people hate it. I'm kind of on the fence about it. I, I like it. I like it the way they're doing it, but I also like it the way they did it in previous years. However, this is the, the way they're doing it this year, okay? so. They were doing it in seasons, similar to how Madden does like a season pass, basically, in every season. There's a card at the end of the path um, for completing objectives, stuff like that, if you play Madden. Um, this is kind of how they're doing it this year. We are currently in season two. So in season one and season two, you could use cards known as core cards and set one cards and now set two cards because we're in season two, okay? So how they're releasing cards this year is the core cards are basically live series and any other cards they choose to release as core, which they're not choosing to release many. It's basically just live series. And then there's a there's another program, the Mexico Cities program, that is a core cards. I'm, I'm sure they're gonna release more core cards as the game comes out, but basically right now, it's just like the live series collections, the collection rewards that you get from each team, that each division, and so on and so forth. Those are all core cards like Derek Jeter, Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, um, and then the Mexico City is a core pro program. Again, that can be put towards uh, core collections and, and core cards. So you're able to use those cards, and then the cards that came out last season were known as set one. So you were able to use set one cards and core cards last season. This season is set two. So they're releasing them by sets each season. So right now, we're not restricted in any way. We can use any card basically that we have in our inventory because it's only season two and there's 27 days left. Okay, so now as you see on the screen here, when season three comes out in 27 days, however, set one is gonna go away for certain game modes, primarily the ranked game modes. So if you have a set one card in your squad um, that you love, that you're using in ranked, uh, unfortunately, unless you put them in the wild card slot, which I'll, I'll highlight that more in a minute, but unless you put them in the wild card slot, that card's not going to be usable in ranked um, for season three. What is going to be usable is again core cards, which are going to be usable all year, and set two and set three cards, which set three is going to come out as soon as season three releases. So that's how they're doing it to kind of keep content fresh, keep people's teams fresh. Um, you know, I have a lot of set one cards that I love, so it's going to be tough to decide who to put into my wild card spot to use, but. I kind of like that they're keeping it fresh, but then again, it, it, it kind of stinks because all the work that you put in, and I'll talk about this later, to complete collections to get these top tier set one cards is kind of just going to go away because you, again, you can only use one in a wild card slot. So I'm not sure how I totally feel about it. Uh, hopefully each set has some banger cards so that we never even, you know, think twice about it. And every set we get is just insane. So we're just like so focused on grinding for the next set that's how i hope they're doing it that's how it seems they've been doing it considering how they've been releasing cards so far um let's just hope they keep that up keep the content fresh and uh we're able to build our teams the way we want so that's just kind of the breakdown on how content is working this year basically how they've been doing it is you know season starts you get your season xp you, you get your sets coming out, and then they release programs, monthly awards, different conquests, different challenges, stuff like that to, to kind of build your, your sets up. Now that we know how, how sets are working, how seasons are working this year, let's kind of get into you know what, what you as a beginner should do to collect the cards or get the cards that you want to use in ranked or use online or use for whatever. Maybe you're just an offline grind kind of guy and you just like to collect the cards or whatever. We're just gonna get into like, how you go about doing that kind of in an efficient and best way. We're gonna take a look at programs. So programs are broken down into three things. There's the season two XP reward path. Let's click on that real quick. It's the XP reward path that releases every season. So next season, it'll be the season three XP reward path. Along this reward path, you get a lot of good, good, good cards that you can use in rank that you can use for your Diamond Dynasty team. Um, basically, they give you a ton of free packs and a ton of like cards, cosmetics, stuff like that, that you unlock along the way to get to the very end, which is a, a third boss pack. So you get three of these packs here, these boss packs, um, and you get to choose 
uh, three of the five cards that are featured in the Season XP Boss Pass. So for me, I'm choosing Greg Maddox, Chase Utley, and Josh Donaldson. I'm not going to get into why. Um, they just I just know Donaldson has a great swing, Utley has a great swing, and Greg Maddox is a great pitcher on Hall of Famer above. I almost was going to choose Mo. I've decided against it again because his pitch mix doesn't really translate well to the game. Um, some people hit really well off of him, so I'm going with Maddox. And, and starting pitching is very, very lacking this year so far. Um, unless you have grinded out for Nolan Ryan, unless you've grinded out for Randy, starting pitching is, is kind of going to be has got to kind of be mid, especially when season three starts, and even before. So it's not that great so far. So again, those are my choices for that. But let's get into like how you complete this. Basically, the only way to complete the season two XP reward path or XP reward path is just to play the game. You can get XP in Road to the Show, Franchise, Diamond Dynasty, whatever you do in MLB, you're getting XP and you're gaining XP along this path here. So as you go, you're going to unlock some of these cards here, like Aaron Loop, great card, Nick Castellanos, um, these kind of guys. And then another pack that's featured is this Kaiju XP reward path uh, pack. Uh, Blake Snell, Cl Corey Kluber, John Franco, some great picks out of this pack. Um, as you go, you're going to be able to complete this, and it's not going to be too tough. To do. You're just going to complete it passively unless you sit down and focus on gaining XP like through gameplay and like a Road of the Show uh, method or something like that. This will get completed passively for you. All of this has been done. We still have 27 days left in the season, and I'm almost finished it so and then once you finish the xp reward path completely you get over to this bonus section that's featured on the right side of the screen it's basically a wheel spin so every 25,000 xp that you get extra you get sent to a, a big board and it's basically like a wheel spin and you get a random reward to choose from so that's cool like as long as you're gaining xp you're getting rewards all right, now the next set of programs we're going to get into is Team Affinity. Team Affinity, again, has some really good cards that you can go for. AL Central here. Um, the two Team Affinities that are like the top two divisions that I would focus on this, this season are the NL East and the AL West. They both have really, really good cards featured in them, uh, like this Lance McCullers, Chili Davis. All, all these cards here are serviceable in the uh, in the AL West here and the NL East as well. Some great cards. You got Jacob DeGrom and Tim Raines, two of my favorite cards from set two. Uh, basically, I'm not going to get into a full comprehensive guide on how to complete Team Affinity, but I'm going to kind of break it down as quickly as possible for you. How it works is you have a showdown. If you don't know what a showdown is, it's just like you're facing bosses. Um, you go into showdown, you draft a team, you face bosses, you uh, progress throughout it, and then it's basically like win or go home each challenge. So you get, you get a challenge, you win the challenge, you move on until you finish the whole entire showdown. That's kind of how it works. So a showdown, and then you have a conquest for each uh, Team Affinity division. So if you do these two things, you're going to get uh, 50,000 Team Affinity points, which will get you up to uh, this pack here. Now these other, like they're called henchman packs, they feature cards that you have to get these PXP missions done with. So see, once you get to 50K, actually 30K, you're going to get the, your first pack here. Um, that's going to feature a future star. You come down here to the future stars missions. You click on that. You get PXP. The way you get PXP in this game is you use a card, online, offline, whatever, and you earn PXP, and it basically levels that card up to um, what's considered a parallel level 5, which is hard to get, but you just level that card up by playing with it. 200 PXP, not that hard to get. You complete these missions with those cards that you unlock. Okay, so then basically you're doing the showdown, the conquest, and then how I would complete it is going into your mini seasons and completing that. Again, I'm not going to get into a full guide of how to complete Team Infinity. Yeah, I have a video on my channel if you want to learn how to complete Team Infinity. Go watch that video or just look it up and watch somebody else's video on how to complete Team Infinity. I'm just trying to give you guys an overall base of knowledge of how like you can get good cards in this game. Another thing I forgot to mention with Team Infinity though is, again, you also have moments for each one. So how I would go about it is moments then showdown then conquest and make sure you're using the cards that you're unlocking from the uh, captain and henchman packs as you go okay okay so we went over the xp reward path we went over team infinity let's get into the other programs now with other programs the best programs to complete for like top tier cards would be your monthly awards so aaron judge here in the may monthly awards matt chapman in the april monthly awards those are two cards that i've used in rank that can be used in rank great cards to have um and then again in the may tops now they actually gave us two really good relievers they gave us craig kimbrell and they also gave us um kenley jansen so two great great relievers to have for your bullpen when you complete the, that program out the tops now essentially how you complete tops now is again you uh you do the missions you do the tops now missions right um you start with the moments you finish all the moments 
Once you've finished all the moments, it's gonna unlock some of these cards here. You take those cards into Conquest, play for the CPU, you know, whatever that you need to do to get PXP, and then you rack up a thousand PXP with those with those players, and then obviously this mission as well, which is from uh, this other pack here, this Tops Now flashback pack. Uh, so basically, the way it works with programs, play moments, unlock cards, use cards, offline online wherever to get pxp to get those missions completed so that's the basis of it they release a program you do all the moments which is just like a, a challenge basically like hit a home run get a hit get two hits you know you do your challenge you do your moments as you do those moments you're going to unlock a couple of these cards you take those cards put them on your squad go into a conquest go into a play for the cpu game wherever you want to use the card easiest to do it offline i think um as you use the card, you're racking up PXP, you're leveling up that card, and then you're moving, progressing further and further into the program as you're completing those missions. So for instance, this is a 1000 PXP mission. You can use any of these Tops Now cards to get that 1000 PXP to finish this part of the June Tops Now program. It's pretty simple. Now that we talked about programs and how to complete them um, and how to get like your cards, we're gonna talk about why they're releasing them this way. So look at these Incognito and Kaiju series, right? For instance, these cards, most of these cards are not making anybody's team, really. I like to call them filler programs. Basically, the reason they're releasing these is so that everyone has a shot to get enough cards collected to complete the set two collections, the set one collections, and that's where your real, real breadwinner cards are located, is in the collections. Now let's go over to that screen. Okay, so if you look at the set collections here, uh, you see that those three cards featured in the set collection. It's Hank Aaron, David Wright, and Randy Johnson. All three of those cards are accessible by collecting set two cards. So if you go into set collections, click on set two. I have collected um, 160 cards, which is enough to get me this Rich Gossage, which is a great reliever. Great reliever to have for your, your rank squad. Uh, Big Poppy, another really, really good DH card or first baseman that you can use. And then you get a choice pack at 160 set two cards. And the choice pack contains one of the big three, uh, Randy Johnson, Hank Aaron, David Wright. I chose Randy Johnson because pitching again is lacking this year. And Randy Johnson's like one of the best pitchers in the game by far all year long. So I chose him. There's other options to be had at third base and right field. Not many options to be had at starting pitching. So how you're doing this is, like I said, programs, team affinity, set, set uh, season two XP reward path. Like those three things are going to net you a ton of cards you add those cards to the collections because most of that's all set to or in whatever season you're in basically that's how it's going to be like the new programs that come out they're all going to be set three when set three's out so again it's like rinse and repeat you're just collecting finishing programs collect get the big name players add them to your squad rinse and repeat that way um but like i said the filler cards you're definitely going to want to complete those programs get the filler cards add them to your collections so that you can get rich Gosh's big poppy randy johnson whoever you want to choose from the set two collection choice pack and as you collect more and more cards you could even collect i, I don't know if i'm going to do this but you could even collect all three of these guys if you collect all 300 uh set two uh, cards there isn't even 300 currently out yet i don't think but if you were to do that you would be able to get all three of these uh these guys um for your squad same thing can be said for this big core collection now there's there's the live series collection which gives you all core cards um however for this core collection you can't use live series cards in order to lock them into the collection so see here we go into core it's all like the collection rewards so like you collect the yankees you get a card that can be locked into this collection. You collect the AL East, you get a card for that. Those can be locked into this collection. However, base live series cards are not locked into the core collection. I'm at 136 out of 180 for, again, this Corey Seer card. What's great about the core collection is, again, like I said before, it can be used all year long. So if we unlock, let me move my camera real quick so you guys can see. Oops, huh, wrong thing. If we move my camera, if we unlock this Corey Seeger card, right? He can be used at shortstop all year. Like, you don't have to worry about using that wild card. You don't have to worry about slotting him in elsewhere. We'll talk about the wild card right after this. Um, but again, if you complete that core collection, you get this Corey Seager card, usable all year long. No worries at all. So that's another great collection that you guys can complete.
Okay, so over on the team builder screen, I told y'all guys we were gonna talk about the wild card. If you go over to up in the top left hand corner, this wild card doesn't play a factor yet because all cards that we have in our inventory right now in season two are usable in ranked. However, like I said, when season three comes out, set one cards are no longer gonna be usable in ranked unless you slot them into this one wild card slot. So for me, I'm gonna slot Chipper Jones in my wild card slot. But if you click on this up here, you can change your wild card slot. So some people have been saying like in my lives or they, they get this mistaken that you once you choose a wild card slot for the season or wild card for the season you can't change it like it's locked in no you can change it anytime from game to game so if i'm slumping with chipper and i want to try someone else from set one while season three is going on i'll wild card another card in there maybe i need a pitcher or something maybe i need to maybe i'm out of energy on all my pitches and i need to slot a picture in there real quick like bob gibson or something from set one you can do that it's not locked in it's not permanent so <clears throat> You can literally just interchange this game to game. Um, so for me, it's going to be Chipper Jones, probably for the entire duration of set three when that's out. Um, and then we'll we'll see where, where it goes. But again, when set one expires, you can still use one card from that set in the wild card slot. Now, I wanted to reiterate, though, like I said before, I want to get this point across that your set one cards once you know season three comes out they're not going to disappear some people th have been saying like oh i'm going to lose all my cards." no you're not going to lose your cards they're all going to still be in your inventory they're just not going to be usable in certain modes like conquest and ranked however like and i'm sure mini seasons as well will have like oh you can only use certain sets for this specific mini season but like you're still going to have those cards you can still use them in certain certain conquests certain areas where they're eligible to be used but i'm assuming that once season three starts since it, over here on the left it says ranked in conquest i'm assuming that most conquests that are going to be released in season three are only going to be set two set three and core card eligible so just keep that in mind you're still going to have your set one cards but again just to reiterate you're probably not going to be able to use them that much the last thing i want to touch on before we end this video uh, is with MLB The Show, it's a very different than 2K and Madden um, with regards to packs. My personal preference to you or my advice to you, do not buy packs, okay? Do not. I don't care if your best friend just pulled Mike Trout, if your best friend just pulled the new 99 overall uh, headliner pack or whatever. Do not use your stubs for packs if you want to get anywhere in this game. I was an idiot. I've used my sub sums for packs, but I, I, I stream on Twitch. I, I make YouTube videos like I'm no money spent, but like I still get that itch to open some packs like it's okay here and there, but do not go out and dump all your stubs into packs. Your stubs are better used for completing collections, uh, getting those top tier cards that way and not trying to pull top tier cards. What kind of sucks the way they're doing it this year though is they've released big cards like Joe Maurer, Fernando Tatis, and Mickey Mantle only in chase packs to try to get you to spend your money, to try to get you to spend your hard earned dough on some freaking packs. But stubs are kind of hard to come by this year since you can't sell you know, rewards and stuff like that. So. I would keep my stubs and not use them on packs. Use them to complete live series collections. Use them to, you know, say you're only a couple cards away from finishing set two or whatever and you really want that Randy Johnson. Use your stubs for that. Get a couple, get two more cards, lock in that Randy Johnson, you know. But again, like Joe Maurer, look, he's behind the chase pack here. So if we're on the 50 pack bundle, it's 75,000 stubs. That's a lot of stubs. And it's not like Madden where packs are hot. Like in MLB, packs are very, very unforgiving. In 2K and Madden, like if you drop 50 bucks, right? Most of the time you're gonna get a good card that you can use or a guaranteed really good card that you can use on your squad. It's not the case in MLB. You're spending 75,000 stubs, which is like 50 real life dollars um, just for a like one in a hundred shot at maybe pulling this Joe Maurer card, which is like one of the more expensive cards in the game right now because it just got released. But again, I recommend do not buy packs. All right, last thing I want to cover for y'all um, in this kind of slipped my mind, but it is the last thing I want to cover for y'all is with the programs, there is also um, a ranked program and a battle royale program. So. And again, events as well. We're getting to the online sort of stuff right now that was kind of, because the biggest thing about grinding in this game is offline. So online, I kind of leave for the very end, um, but you can grind this way as well if you enjoy playing online. So let's get into events first. So if you go over here to the event program, as you're racking up event wins, you're gonna get a rewind pack, which is featured cards from previous events. Um, 
What stinks is last year they had them as sellable. So this year, all rewind packs have been unsellable. No extra subs that way, which kind of sucks. So if you want to grind out these events and sell these cards, by all means do so. So far though, the events in MLB have been not great and the card values have been extremely low. So I haven't been playing. Every other year I've played a ton of events because you can get tons of stubs from it. Um, but this year, the stubs just aren't there to be had. Uh, so I haven't been playing events. I haven't been grinding out cards, especially because the cards that they're releasing are not that great so far. Um, hopefully, events gets a little bit of a buff and it makes it more worthwhile to get 20 wins. Because like previously, a 20 win card in events, um, if you finished it quickly, that card is going for over 100k usually. And then when the event passes and it's in the rewind pack, Again, that card is usually goes up in value because less people have it, less people want to sell it. So that was a great way to make stubs in previous years in this game, but this year, not not the best, you know. All right, and now you also have your Battle Royale program, which, again, you can get the flawless Battle Royale rewards from this program just by completing the BR missions here. Uh, wins, PXP, hits, 12-win um, reward, obviously, if you go 12-0 or just get 12 wins, you get you get uh, progress in the program. And then the PXP missions for, you know, specific cards that you have a chance to draft when you're playing Battle Royale. So, again, you complete this program just by playing Battle Royale, essentially. And then you, you get a flawless reward for free. Uh, just from grinding again only downside is it's not sellable so if you think oh i'm gonna grind this out i don't really want the car i just want to sell it get some stubs they nerfed that into the ground can't do that this year um but again it's another great way for a no money spent player to get a really good end game card on their squad and then last but not least is the rank program similar to battle royale um you go over to the rank program uh, solo missions is just tallying the innings uh pxp missions is from the cards that you're getting this this season in ranked uh, stat missions obviously and then you can also complete this program through rank co-op by playing innings and in rank co-op uh, it takes you through and you'll get eventually a world series reward which again not sellable but an end game card that you can add to your squad great way to buff buff your team and a great way to uh do it no money spent all right guys that's pretty much going to do it for me in this video if you have any questions at all if you're new to diamond dynasty if you're confused about something just leave it in the comments i reply to every comment i'll answer you um it's kind of hard to get a full comprehensive guide together there's so much content so much stuff to talk about with mlb the show and if i missed anything please let me know in the comments or you know just leave a comment for you know your fellow mlb the show gamer you know maybe they they need a suggestion that i didn't point out and you can just comment it and uh, leave it for them to read. But I appreciate all y'all watching the video and sticking around with me. And I'll catch you guys in the next MLB The Show Diamond Dynasty guide video.